Hi YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Um, we're gonna talk all about personal finance and self-development. So join us for the ride. So what is the topic for today? Today we are talking about the holy grail of personal finance. And that topic is passive income. So what is passive income? A lot of people think passive income is just like money like falling from the sky. Actually, it's, it's money that you, um, you acquire by putting in either time or money up front and then that effort can yield returns in the long term without you having to do any other work besides the upfront investment. So this is like a really important major concept because if you want to be financially free, the idea of making money without doing work is really important. So like let's say like what's the definition of wealth? To me, I thought about this and I was like is wealth a numerical value? Is it like an amount of money? Because like let's say you have a million dollars. If you also spend a million dollars in the same year that you make a million dollars, then you're back to zero dollars. What my definition of wealth is, is being able to do anything you want with your time. And in order to do anything you want with your time, you have to have passive income. Before we move on, let's um, encourage you guys to subscribe. Um, I really want to become monetized on YouTube, and so I need a thousand subscribers in order to do that. So, yeah. First, we're going to talk about the revenue sources that require you to invest your time. The first option for generating passive income is going to be affiliate marketing. And for anybody who doesn't know what affiliate marketing is, affiliate marketing is the idea that a brand or a company basically will pay people who recommend their products the way that they would pay a marketing team to help gain exposure for their product. So, if you are an affiliate with a certain brand or with a certain company, you get a referral link and then you can send it to your friends or you can post it somewhere where other people will find it. And if people purchase from that link, you'll get a kickback from the company, like maybe like 10%, 3%, whatever, on commissions from the product that people are buying. Okay, so now I'm about to practice what I'm preaching and I'm going to include some affiliate links here below that you guys can check out. I'm gonna include a Robinhood affiliate link. I only am recommending products that I use. I love Robinhood, I'm, I'm using it right now for investing and it's just like the interface is really nice, it's really easy, really user friendly, it's like the simplest app. And also you can check out my camera equipment affiliate link from Amazon in the description. And anything else? Oh. I'm also going to include a link to my banking app, which I actually really like. I'm, I just started using Chime like this year. I previously had Citizens Bank, but the app just like never worked. Like in 2020, you can't have an app that like doesn't work for a bank. So yeah, so I started using Chime and I love it. And if you use the referral link for Chime, you get 50 bucks free and I get 50 bucks free. So yeah, if you want 50 bucks, switch to Chime. The app is really good, it works really quickly, it's like really pretty, nicely designed, so. The biggest downside of this source of passive income is that it works better if you have a bigger following. So like the more people that are like going to your YouTube channel or like watching your content, the more likely they are gonna be to find your link and click on it. You know, or you could pursue a strategy with your friends where y'all DM each other affiliate links all day every time you wanna buy something on Amazon. <laughs> I guess y'all could get paid that way. You could also make a YouTube channel that like reviews products. So a lot of people make videos reviewing a certain product and then they link in the description. But you're really getting like the most ready to buy people because if they're searching on YouTube like best coffee maker 2020, like they're trying to buy a coffee maker, right? So if they see your video and then they find the link in the description, they're very likely to purchase from that link. So the second uh, different revenue stream for passive income is YouTube ad revenue. So the idea here is that YouTube pays you ad revenue because YouTube shows advertisements on your videos and then the YouTuber gets 50% and Google, you know, the owners of YouTube, get the other 50% of whatever ad revenue was paid by the company who's promoting the ad. So very accessible, anybody can start a YouTube channel. The biggest barrier to entry here is like getting monetized actually takes a lot of work. In order to monetize on YouTube, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So that does take a little bit of work, but like once you get there, I think it starts to like really snowball. You might think like, oh, but you have to make more videos. Like that's not a form of passive income. Like you have to continue doing work. 
But the reason why it does qualify as a form of passive income is because once you've built up like a bunch of videos, you have a backlog of videos that continue making you money. So every single month YouTube pays you based on your total amount of views across your channel. So let's say you made like 800 videos or something, you only made one new video this month. You're still gonna get paid for every single view on the 800 videos that you made in the last couple years um, in, the, in the current month. So just to give you some context on about how much this revenue source could possibly make you, if you have half a million views per month, you'll make about $4,000 probably per month. The typical um, amount that a YouTuber makes is $5 per every 1,000 views and the CPM or like cost per I don't know like basically how much you get paid for view actually is different for different channels so if you run more of like a lifestyle-y channel your TPM might be a little lower and finance channels have the highest CPM of all because um, like people who tend to have a lot of purchasing power and are interested in learning more about money and becoming more educated about finance typically watch finance channels all right so the third possible revenue stream for passive income is an online course if you have anything that you could teach, anything you're good at, knowledgeable about, and you can package that and sell it. And so you can sell it on a place like Udemy or Skillshare, and then the ticket price per course will probably be a little lower. You could sell it on your own personal website, and then you could charge into the hundreds or thousands for that course. Online courses are becoming more and more popular, and I think they're a great source of passive income because after you've made the course, you don't have to really do much other work, maybe a little bit of marketing if you are trying to promote it that way. The fourth possible idea for passive income is renting unused spaces. Do you have a room in your house that you don't use? Like even your living room, like, like maybe a storage space in your garage. Like can you rent out that room either to someone to live there or to sleep there for a certain number of nights per month like Airbnb or Craigslist or like renting out storage is such a cool idea for passive income because like let's say you have a garage or a closet or something. You could just like charge someone like to just leave their stuff there um and then like maybe you have a parking spot like if outdoors you all have a parking spot or something you could rent that out per month or per week or whatever to somebody who needs a parking spot the fifth idea for passive income is royalties and intellectual property so this one is a little bit more difficult but honestly very accessible another um type of investment of investing your time like a good one um, that I think like anybody could do in like literally like four or five hours is like upload a bunch of art to like a t-shirt store. Like just make a few like graphic edits to some art or something and upload it to like a t-shirt store website and then anybody who uses that art to make a t-shirt will have to pay you in commissions for your art. Um, another idea about royalties or intellectual property would be to write a book. If you've written a book on a certain topic, like that can help you achieve your professional goals and it can also make you money maybe. The average royalty per book sold is like usually like five bucks. So if you sold like a hundred books per month, you can make like $500 per month. So yeah, write a book or like singers and songwriters, um, you know, they make royalties on their music. So that's kind of a special niche thing. Like if you're that kind of person. So now we're gonna transition into talking about how you can use money to invest up front and that will get you more money back later. The sixth idea for passive income um, is dividend paying stocks. So what is a dividend? A dividend is like a company thanking you for being an owner of their stock by paying you a small percentage of their profits. Dividend stocks typically pay out monthly or they pay out every three months and it can range from anywhere from 1 to 8% of your stock holdings annually. So Walmart pays a 2% dividend return annually. Um, Coca-Cola pays a 3% dividend return annually. General Motors pays a 3.8% return annually. And other companies like Apple and Disney also pay dividends. So not all stocks pay dividends, but some of them do. So you just have to do your research about which stocks pay dividends and then you can cash in on this form of passive income. So let's give you some context here. If you have $1 million invested into dividend paying stocks, this will make you about $100 a day. So that's very good. If you have about $100,000 invested into dividend paying stocks, you'll make about 500 extra dollars per month. 
So this is actually why the rich stay rich. If you imagine having like dividend paying stocks at like, you know, maybe like $4 million worth of them or something, you're basically living off of the dividends being paid to you. And you're not even touching the money that you have invested beyond that. You also want to keep in mind that you want to hold your dividend producing stocks in a tax advantage account because dividend income is considered like normal income and it is taxable. So that's going to be either a Roth IRA or a 401k. The seventh idea for passive income generating revenue source is a high interest savings account. If you have a lot of money in a bank account and it's just sitting there not earning interest, you might as well open a high interest savings account, which can yield between two to 3% return on your entire savings account per year. One example of a good savings account would be the Marcus by Goldman Sachs savings account, which yields a 2.25% return annually. But if you really do the numbers, it could be significant. So if you have $20,000 in a high interest savings account, you're gonna make around $450 per year. $450 isn't like that much, but like it could pay for like your phone bill or like a really cool shopping spree or like honestly like a weekend vacation. Like why not? Just do it. You get to, there's, there's no risk here. There's no risk. Like you put your money in a savings account and then you get interest on your money. The eighth idea for a um, form of passive income is growth stocks. So growth stocks are different from dividend paying stocks because they don't pay dividends. So the company isn't sharing its profit with you directly, but if the company grows and the value of the stock goes up, then you are making money passively. So you could invest your money in random stocks that you think are gonna grow, or you could just pick any index fund of choice, and a typical index fund will yield a five to 8% return on your money annually. So to put that into perspective, that is $700 per year on every $10,000 that you invest. So that's pretty decent. That's like, that's, that's just good. That's good, you should do that. So maybe you're like, okay, like, you know, $700 isn't enough to live on in a year. But let's say, for example, you had a million dollars invested into an ETF or an index fund. So in a year, that million dollars would yield like 70K in annual returns, which is definitely enough to live on. So it's pretty cool to think about. Like if you can just somehow get a million dollars invested into an index fund, then you're financially free forever. So. So the ninth idea for passive income generation is real estate. And I have a fun fact for you. 90% of millionaires make their millions dollars by investing in real estate. So it's like the most popular way to become a millionaire is like investing in real estate. Honestly, it's probably one of the simplest if you just save a certain amount, enough for a down payment on some property and then have rental tenants pay it off over the years then you can make a lot of money that way. And then once that property is paid off, all of the rent from that property will be passive income to you. This is like one of the most passive, classic forms of passive income because you really don't have to do anything other than manage the property. And you can even hire a property manager if you want to, which means that you would be literally be doing nothing other than paying the property manager to ensure that you get rent from that property every month. So that's it, that's the end of the video. Um, if you learned something, leave a like down below. If you want more content similar to this content, subscribe and leave a comment telling me what you wanna learn about, any financial topics that interest you and I'll try to make a video on them in the future. So thanks and I'll see you around, bye.